thank you. <laughs> so first, I would like to, to thank Vela for, for this invitation uh, to, to present our results on uh, HCV uh, genotyping and resistance testing. And uh, before presenting you our results, I would like to, to convince you that resistance testing is important for, for patients because today uh, we don't exactly know what we need for HCV genotyping, what we need for HCV resistance testing because recommendations are always new. We have a new version uh, every month. We will have new ones uh, again uh, next, uh, next week uh, by my head of laboratory, Jean-Michel Pavlovsky, for, uh, on behalf of ESOL. It will be uh, an important recommendation, and I will give you some elements of this recommendation for, for, uh, for, for the future. So, um, first I would like just to come back on uh, the different treatment options we have for, for the patient. Uh, the most used today is uh, the sofosbuvir, which is uh, an NS5B inhibitor, and which is uh, generally um, associated with an NS5A uh, inhibitor. We have today uh, different options for the NS5A inhibitors. We have Lidibasvir, Daclatasvir, and the new one, Velpatasvir, which has been approved just before the summer in, uh, by, by FDA. For some of these combinations, we can add rabavarin because uh, uh, some patients are difficult to treat and we have to add rabavarin for this patient. Uh, in general, uh, the, the problem for, for, this, uh, for, for which we have a different outcome for the patient is uh, the, uh, some parameters coming from the host and some parameters coming from the, vir from, from the virus. From the host is cirrhosis, which could, go to, uh, which could lead to uh, a low uh, sustained virological response. And in the vir viral side, we have the genotype and also races, uh, which are a resistance associated substitution that could lead to a, a decrease of the sustained virological response. So, uh, for genotype, just an example, uh, it's a, a study published in Gastroenterology uh, last year. Uh, it's patients which are genotype 3, and you can see for different options of treatment we have that the sustained virological response is clearly different between the different treatments we have. For example, with Ledipasvir and Sophosbuvir, in some particular patients, we have a clear decrease of SVR if you don't have rubavirin, for which we have 100% uh, of SVR. So genotyping is clearly important and recommended by, by all recommendations today. But it remains a question because with the new uh, option we have with Velpatasvir, uh, Velpatasvir is an NS5A inhibitor which, here, uh, which is clearly a pangenotypic inhibitor uh, in association with Sophosbuvir. So do we need to genotype our, our patient with this combination? The answer is yes, because when we uh, have some patient with no cirrhosis, no previous treatment, yes, you have a very good SVR, 98%. But when the patient are, uh, have cirrhosis or are experienced, you decrease your SVR to 89, which is less good, and 10% of failure is not good. So you have to add rabavarin for this patient to uh, increase your, your SVR. So even for this kind of combination, genotyping of uh, our patient remains important. So for sofosbuvir and velpatasvir, it's the only pangenotypic combination, but SVR decrease in genotype 3, cirrhotic patients, uh, I anticipated just a lot, uh, particularly when associated with, uh, with RACIS um, NS5A Y93H. All other combinations are not pangenotypic and need to be genotyped prior to treatment. And today, for simplification, uh, the, the rules remain to genotype all the patients because uh, it's needed for practically all uh, cases. So now, races, why races could uh, uh, impair the, 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 the treatment? Uh, and first, what are the prevalence of the races in naive patients? So it's uh, a, a meta-analysis of uh, our head uh, on different uh, cohorts and for different, uh, the different domains. As you can see, NS5B uh, races are very rare, and when they are present in some patients, 
it remains at uh, low cutoff, so as minor variance, and probably uh, the uh, impact of this mutation is low, and uh, that's why for the recommendation today, testing NS5B resistance in naive patients is not recommended. For NS5A, inhibitors, it's clearly different. We have a high rate of uh, RASIs in naive patients at baseline, with, for some of them, uh, um, major RASIs uh, above 15%, which is a cutoff uh, clinically uh, relevant. And uh, it's uh, clearly uh, important in a different region of, of the world with some differences with Asia Pacific for uh, genotype 1A, but clearly 20% uh, of the patient could be uh, impacted by these RASIs, and uh, it's one patient for five, so it's uh, really important to, to screen, in my opinion, that's resistance. For NS3, uh, uh, it's uh, an intermediate uh, stage between NS5A and NS5B. We have, uh, for some patients, minor RASIs uh, at baseline, and for one mutation, the Q80K, we have a major uh, resistance uh, associated substitution at baseline, uh, which uh, um, can lead to resistance for patients which are treated by Cimeprevia. But it's uh, a treatment which is less used today. So the, the, the second question, yes, we have RASIs, particularly for uh, NS5A, but do these uh, RASIs uh, could impact the, uh, the outcome of the patient? The, the answer is yes. Uh, one example with uh, sophosbuvir and lidipasvir, when you have uh, resistance-associated variants at baseline, you decrease your SVR uh, from uh, practically 100% to 85% uh, eight, uh, 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 and when you split your RAVs uh, in RAVs with high potential of resistance and low potential of resistance, uh, it's clear uh, you decrease with high, highly uh, resistant uh, mutations uh, your SVR to 67, which is really bad. So the presence of, at baseline of HEV RAVs uh, that confer high level resistance has an effect on the rate of SVR with interferon-free regimen. And the parameters that influence their effect include the genotype. So genotype is important to choose your, uh, your treatment, but also to interpret the resistance. And you have also the patient background and the treatment regimen which influence uh, this, uh, this part. So today, we have two possibilities. We have the possibility to screen resistance. Uh, and when you screen the resistance, uh, if you find NS5A RASIs at a rate of 15% or above, you have to add, sorry, you have to add rabavirin or increase treatment duration. And if you don't have resistance testing in a naive patient, uh, you can optimize your therapy and add rabavirin or uh, increase the duration of the treatment. It's two options. Concerning patients which are experienced, uh, it's not absolutely necessary to do resistance testing, but it's very useful to guide retreatment decision. And particularly in patients difficult, to, uh, hard to treat, and the problem uh, remains to interpret this data because today we don't have so much trial data and guidelines to use this, this, this resistance. To, so to summarize this first part, we have uh, clearly, uh, it's important to, to make genotyping of, uh, of our patients, and it remains recommended by all the recommendations. And for resistance testing, we have two options, over-treated or uh, increase the duration of the treatment, or resistance testing. And in my opinion, over-treated the patient or increase the duration uh, could have side effects for our patient, and also increase the cost. And finally, in my opinion, the cost exceed the cost of resistance testing. So why do we don't uh, recommend this? The answer is 
Today, uh, resistance testing is not available in a lot of hospitals, so we have to have two kind of recommendation. Recommendation for hospitals which have the resistance testing and for other hospitals. But in my opinion, it's important, and I think I'm convinced you. So, the, uh, the, 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 the question that remains today is not do we have to test resistance or not? In my opinion, it's important. But the question is, do we need NGS for testing resistance? Maybe it could be uh, done by a uh, Sanger, and uh, the interest of NGS could be just to be automatized and standardized, but it is clinically relevant to use NGS. So uh, for this, uh, for, to answer this question, we enrolled uh, 31 patients, uh, which are all experienced patients uh, from this uh, there's uh, 31 uh, patients, there was 21 uh, genotype 1 patients, and I will just focus on these patients today. We have also other genotypes, and I could give you some information about this patient just after if you want. Uh, among these 21 patients, we have 25 samples, because 21 were in second line, but four of these patients uh, failed to their treatment and had uh, and has, uh, third line uh, third line therapy. All have a uh, high viral load uh, uh, at baseline, and uh, they were more men than female, and a mean age, uh, age of 53 years. I don't develop the method because it has been developed just before. We uh, use just uh, for genotyping a comparison with LIPA uh, and with Sanger. It's an in house uh, uh, technique. Uh, where we screen NS5B, but it's not exactly the same domain that NS5B, which is screened by uh, Vela. Uh, we screen in our laboratory the first part of NS5B, and uh, Vela screens the second part of NS5B, so it could be a little bit different. Uh, for resistance testing, we used uh, an in-house Sanger protocol and a Vela protocol, and analysis was done by two, pro by, by two protocols, one by Vela and another one by Smartgene, uh, because in our laboratory we use Smartgen uh, for, with Sanger for HIV, and also because uh, the resistance uh, report is available for the moment with uh, Vela only for genotype 1A and 1B, and uh, I think this uh, will be an improvement in, in the near future. Uh, you can ask some questions for this uh, to, to Vela team, but uh, f we, we need another pipeline to interpret the, the results which are not genotype 1A and 1B, so that's why we use another genotype, another an uh, pipeline analysis. Analyse. So first, the results uh, for our uh, 21 patients of genotype 1 and 25 samples. As you can see, the differences between the different techniques uh, is really uh, low. We have just two patients uh, which are different for genotype 1. One which is uh, detected as genotype 1A by LIPA, uh, detected as 1I by Sanger, and interpreted 1B by uh, the BOSS uh, analysis system uh, from UD, uh, UDS data. The thing is, 1I is clearly close to 1B and not close to 1A. So it's not a problem for me to make a mistake between 1I and 1B because the uh, management of patient will be the same, but between 1A and 1B, it's a problem for some, uh, some treatment, it could be a problem. So clearly, in this case, uh, s uh, sequencing is better than uh, LIPA. In the other case, we have a similar thing with 1B uh, detected by LIPA and 1E uh, by, by our uh, in-house Sanger uh, techniques, which is detected 1G uh, by uh, Vela analysis and 1E by Smartgene. Uh, but 1E and 1G are very closed, so again, sequencing is okay uh, and better than uh, LIPA to uh, analyze uh, the genotype. Now the resistance. So I show you uh, on this slide uh, some different um, uh, so, so resistance for NS3, uh, cumulative resistance, uh, cumulative histogram of resistance. 
we have detected for all our patients. Remember, it's experienced patients, so they all have a lot of resistance. And uh, the first thing we can say is that we have a lot of uh, data that are similar between uh, techniques by uh, uh, Sanger, which is in third position, and Vela, and uh, Vela interpreted by Smargin. For example, if you take this patient, 14, or this patient, 12, or this one, 11, you have exactly the same results. Okay. We have also some additional minority races for approximately one quarter of the, of the patients. It's okay, it's not a surprise to find some minority resistance uh, associated substitution by UDS. Okay, we know all this. But the things which is really important finally is we found also some mutations found above 15%, which is the uh, clinically relevant cutoff, and which are not detected by Sanger. And we find this by, for two patients uh, in NS3, but when we move on NS5A, we, find th we found this for six patients. And six patients for 25 sample, it's uh, very important. The other thing is, okay, we have found some intermediate resistance mutation, okay, uh, doesn't, uh, don't detect it by, uh, by Sanger. Do this have an impact? Yes. Among the six patients, three failed to their treatment because we don't uh, find the mutation before, uh, before the treatment because this study has been done uh, after uh, the, the, the treatment of this patient. So probably, uh, and today, if I, uh, when I show these results to our clinician, they are convinced that, that if they had these results before, they will change their treatment and probably increase the SVR we have in our hospital. So clearly we have uh, additional information with NGS. <coughs> And this additional information impacts the SVR we have in our patient, in particular in experienced patients, which are very difficult to treat today uh, because of uh, absence of, of guidelines. For NS5B, so I don't have so much data to, to present because uh, the problem is uh, we have data with uh, Vela on Dazabuvir resistance, uh, which is not fully covered by our technique, and uh, the Sophosbuvir uh, resistance mutation are not all covered by, by, uh, by Vela, so today it's difficult to, to, uh, to compare the, the results. Uh, the only thing is for, for mutation which are covered by all the technique, we obtain approximately the same results, but uh, we have low number of patients which are resistant on S5B because uh, it's uh, rare, uh, rare resistance. So finally, uh, genotyping, uh, for, uh, for HCV, HCV genotyping by Vela is comparable to Sanger and Lipa and usable for clinical diagnostic. Subtyping uh, could be probably improved by sequencing uh, comparing to Lipa. So uh, I think it's a good, uh, good way to, to genotype our patients. And for resistance testing, it's clearly uh, better than Sanger. Uh, and it's, in my opinion, the only possibility to reach recommendations today to describe the resistance of CT substitution at 15% rate. And this has a clear impact on uh, experienced patients uh, because we have failure due to non-detected races by Sanger. So at the end, it's important. So concerning the system VELA, as you can see, uh, we can use it in, uh, in, uh, in clinical routine. Uh, some improvements are needed. Uh, it's uh, improvement for, uh, for the other genotypes. I say you, genotype uh, 1A and 1B is covered, but today we don't have the results for, for the other genotype, but it will be improved. Uh, we have amplifications, uh, okay, for a lot of, uh, for a lot of patients uh, and for very different genotypes, and it's clearly uh, a, a good thing today because it's really difficult to have amplification for all genotypes today. Uh, 
we are a national reference center and we don't have uh, amplification for all our patients. We have to develop sometimes particular amplification for particular patients. So uh, it's okay with, with this uh, platform. Uh, and I think maybe uh, the, the thing we wanted for the future is the NS5B amplification that cover uh, Sophos Buvir, because today we don't have this information, is not clearly uh, really important because uh, these mutations are really rare. The mutation associated to Sophos Buvir are uh, practically always not fit, so uh, it's not really uh, uh, important for the impact for patient, but for virologists, it's important to have uh, th this information. Not for clinic, but more for, for, for virologists and describe the, the prevalence of this resistance. So finally, I want to thank all my team, uh, the Department uh, of uh, Virology uh, with the National Reference Center, with Jean-Michel uh, Jean Pavlovsky and Stéphane Chevalier, and my uh, little group for NGS in microbiology with my two engineers. So thank you. <laughs>